In the last episode of the Ultimate Beginner's Guide, we set up our steel factory, producing encased industrial beams, some steel pipes, and steel beams. Before we do anything in this episode, however, we are getting really low on power available, so we are going to double our coal power setup. I'll just skip ahead and I'll show you what I did after because it's going to be the exact same thing we already did. But before we go do that though, there's a few things we want to unlock. We want to unlock the enhanced asset security here. That'll help us. We'll want to fix it blueprints. This is going to help us scale our factories a little bit better and eventually the power, ex expanded power. But uh, definitely want to start with this guy. So let's do that. All right, let's hand this stuff in and boom. Next would be the blueprints. And finally, we are going to do the pipes here. The uh, hyper tubes, I mean. <laughs> now we're ready to work on the power. All right, and this is what we did. We pretty much just doubled our output. We added 16 total coal generators. We separated them into two groups of eight. As usual, we try to have one on one side and two on the other side. So we're merging the two into one pipe and then sending this pipe over to the front of the coal generators and doing exactly what we did before. What we had to do here is add a splitter right next to the first splitter that came into this coal line over here. And then we run a Mark III belt from the miners. And then we upgraded both of these miners to Mark II miners. So they now do 120 coal per minute. And then we upgraded the individual belts to Mark II belts. And the same thing is done on this side. So we upgraded the miners to Mark II. We upgraded the belts between the miners and the merger to Mark II belts. And then Mark III belts all the way down to the coal generators where we then split the line, one side going into the coal generators that we previously had, and then one that's going down to the first eight coal generators all the way over here. And now you can see that we are producing 2,400 megawatts of power over here, and we should be good for a little bit. Now we're ready to do phase two. Now there's an easy and a hard way to do phase two. You could overdo it and do more items per minute. But I find that if you start off slow, like five per minute of each one of these items, you can then later on either expand or use the new summer sloop in order to double the out. So we're just going to stick with five per minute here. So we're going to need uh, about 13 smelters. Maybe we'll, we'll do 15 just in case. We'll need one foundry and like something like 35 constructors and 12 assemblers. Oops. So you want to make sure you have all of this on top of a lot of concrete. And then we're going to go and build our phase two factory and make sure bring more cable for the wires. And you'll need a lot of reinforced iron plates for all the belts. Now, if you have Mark three belts for the steel beams, I would suggest that over the Mark II belts of reinforced iron plates. But if you don't have a lot of steel beams, just go ahead and use Mark II. Outside of the input, we don't really need Mark III's. In our case, we have a ton of these. So we'll favor these steel beams over anything else for now. Now, if you've already unlocked the dimensional depots, you don't have to worry about going back and forth. We're going to do that in the next episode. We are going to try to start the process to unlocking those in today's episode because we are going to be near a Sam ore, which is what you're going to need in order to unlock those. All right, where we are going to want to go, you'll want to scan for some coal ore and you'll see some in this vicinity over here. And that's where we want to go right there. We're probably going to bring the coal down and, and set up our phase two somewhere around here because we are going to need other nodes like uh, copper and iron. And those ones are over here. Now near this coal, there'll be a, a crater, crater lake. And in there, you will find a Sam ore and we'll want to tap that too. And the coal is on top over here. So you could climb, you can go up this, um, ramp natural ramp here to go get it so and we're probably going to create the factory somewhere over these rocks over here so while you head over there make sure to bring some power with you all 
Alright, and when you're over here, we're gonna head towards the right here. Next to these uh, rock walls. Now, at some point, you're gonna see this arch over here. And that's where we are going to build on top. We want to make sure we clear that arch. And we're gonna start creating our foundations. Now, make sure you hold control to snap to the grid. And we're going to proceed to doing a fairly large platform here. First thing we're going to do is set up some blueprints. These are going to facilitate our building going forward. And so we'll want to make sure that we just have it all ready to go. Now, our first set of blueprints won't have any sort of um, foundations on them just to make it a little bit easier but later on we're gonna do it in a way that would have all the logistics and everything on a subfloor so the first one we want is a smelter array so we're gonna add four smelters And I'll have these on my Patreon. If you don't want to build them, you could just go and get them. But I'm showing you how to build them right now. Then we're going to have an array here of splitters behind the um, smelters. We're going to make sure that it's coming in from the left hand side. And we're going to add Mark II belts between these splitters and then mark one belt between the splitters and the individual smelters then we'll connect power like this we'll add a pole in between two of them and then we're just gonna connect that pole to another pole between the other two and connect those two for the outputs we can then add a merger we're going to have it go back the way we came from with the splitters. Again, we'll do mark one between the smelters and the mergers here. And mark twos between the mergers themselves. Now you can set these to be doing something, but we'll be using these for different types of products. So we don't want to set a recipe. And when we're done, we could save this. We're going to call this the four times smelter array. We're going to set a smelter icon, and then we're just going to go and save it right here. So after here, you'll want to hit the X at the top right to close that menu, and then make sure to hit save on the blueprint. Now we'll clear our designer here and we're going to do our constructors. So we'll do pretty much the exact same thing we just did here. We're going to add four constructors. And we're going to do a splitter array behind. Again, coming in from the left hand side here. We'll use Mark twos between the splitters. And then we'll use Mark 1s between the splitters and the constructor. We'll add power between these two like we did for the smelters. And then add these two. So all four are powered up now. Now again, we're not going to put any recipes in these because they'll vary. And for the outputs, we're not going to do any sort of outputs here. Mainly because we're going to be doing mix and matching of these constructors and they'll have all different types of mergers. So we're just going to set up these mergers ourselves when we need them. So for this, we'll do four times constructors array. And I'm going to say WO for without output. Okay. And we're going to select the constructor icon here and then we're going to set it over here. Same thing here, make sure to hit that save blueprint at the bottom right before you exit. All right, again, we're going to clear the, the blueprint and then we're going to create a foundry blueprint. Now for the foundry, we're just going to do one, but we're going to set up the input and outputs. 
Mainly because it's a pain to set those up. We're going to have everything come in from the left hand side as usual. Now, if you really want, you could double these all these blueprints and swap out. Instead of coming in from the left, you come in from the right. And then you could use whichever one depending on your scenario at the time. For us, however, we're just going to add a splitter coming in from the, the left hand side. And then we're going to do a three splitters like this to get one at the top. And we're going to take the bottom out and then we are going to add a mark one lift between that splitter and the foundry and then a mark one belt between this splitter and the foundry now for the foundry i'm going to put in the solid steel ingot recipe mainly because that's almost entirely all i'm going to use you don't necessarily have to do that and for the output i'm just going to add a merger we're going to have it uh go towards the left just as consistency with the other ones and then we're going to add a mark one belt between there now we don't need to set up power here there's no point we'll set that up when we actually build our setups and right, we're going to call this the one times foundry with a double array and we're going to select the foundry for the icon and then we're going to set it up. And again here, same thing. Hit the X top right and then hit the save blueprint button on the bottom right. Uh, I already had this done before. So that's why I didn't do it in this video here. Now for the assemblers, we could do it as a single. We could do it as a double. So we're going to we're going to actually set it as a double. Just so that it's easier. Now for these... We'll most likely want, like, this will change depending on the scenario we're doing. But if we don't want to use the splitters or we want to change them up, we'll just delete them and make new ones. I would rather have some sort of array here. So let's just build a splitter line, double splitter line, both coming in from the left hand side. Okay. Again, with the Mark 1 lift heading into it, and then a Mark 1 belt heading into that one. Now, sometimes that will need to be Mark 2s. So, what we could do is just make sure, maybe upgrade all these to Mark 2s just to cover ourselves. But we can do that when we actually need them. It's not a big deal. Let's, however, make sure that the belts between these are the highest belt you got. So I'll put Mark 3 belts here. And then Mark 1 belts between the splitters and the assemblers. And then a Mark 1 lift. And for these, we'll, we won't set a recipe, but we will add a power line to both of these. And we will do mergers. So we'll merge heading back towards the way we came like just for consistency's sake and we will add two mergers in front of each one of these because we might have more than two assemblers and most likely mark one is all you need here and for this we're gonna call this the two assembler two times assembler array set an assembler and then we're going to add it here now for the assem for the assembler blueprint, we'll want to do a few of these. We'll swap these out so that they are coming in from the other side because that'll be useful. So once you save the one, we can just delete what we need here. And then we'll have everything come in from the right hand side instead. Same thing here, mark one lift heading down. And then mark one between the splitters and the assemblers. And then everything else will be mark threes. 
for the mergers we can keep him like this but if we're coming in from that side we might as well swap these out to go back the other way and we can add mark once here so now we save this as a assembler array but this time um uh right input right output re-row okay save that now we are just going to delete one of these And then we'll save this one as a one-time reroll. Save. Then we'll load up our uh, two times regular one there. And then we'll delete one of these. And then we're going to call this the one time array. Just like this. Perfect. Now you got different combinations for your assemblers. The first floor, we are going to be doing some smart plating. So smart plating requires four smelters. So let's grab our blueprint of the four smelter array. We're going to hit H to hold the hologram so that we could place it right where we want it, which is right about here. This just in, make sure you bring extra pipes. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to go back and get some in a bit, but that's fine. These are all going to be doing some iron ingots, except one of these will have to be underclocked to only produce 26.25 per minute. Now, if you're doing these manually and not with a blueprint, you need to make sure that the first belt between the first splitter and the second splitter. So in our case, we're coming in from this side. Okay. From the left hand side, this belt needs to be a Mark II belt. And also this one needs to be a Mark II belt. The first one of the outputs. All right. So since we're heading this way, then we can start our constructors going this way we're going to need quite a bit of constructors here um we're gonna need eight constructors so we're gonna grab our blueprint that creates four constructors here we're gonna line it up now this blueprint does not have outputs and that's okay because we are doing a mix match of different items here so we're gonna make sure to place this down and we're gonna add another one here next to it now to make it easy, make sure you're in blueprint mode here and then just hold control and kind of hover over the other constructor and it's going to place your, your blueprint in the exact position we want. And then all you have to do here is add a Mark II line between all of these splitters, which we already have. So that's perfect. And we're just going to connect the power between the two blueprints. We're going to extend our platform. And we had to go get more items. And now we can finish upgrading our platform. All right, let's head back on top. Now we can add a Mark II belt between the mergers and the splitters here. And let's talk about these constructors. First two, we want to set them to do the iron plates. But the second one here will underclock to only do 10 per minute. Then the next four will be doing cast screws. One of these will have to be underclocked to 70% to only produce 35 per minute. Then the last two will be doing some iron rods. And you'll want to underclock the last one here to be doing just 10 per minute. So for the mergers, we'll want to merge these last two together. We'll merge them in front of this last constructor here. And we just need Mark 1 belts for this. Then for the four constructors of screws, we'll merge them all together. 
and we'll head them towards the uh, the first one over here. So we'll just add mergers, and for this one, we'll have it go this way out. For the belts, you can do mark one between the constructors and the mergers themselves. Um, but then I would, if you have it, just go mark threes in between the mergers. We're going to be dealing with 210 screws for total. So you're going to want to make sure you have Mark three belts at least between the last two or so. But I would just put Mark three belts between all of these mergers. And for these guys, we'll have a merger in front of the, in front of the last one over here. And we're just going to add Mark one belts between like that. All right, so first we'll take the one time assembler array. And we are going to press H. We want to make sure pretty much that this splitter is in the middle of this foundation, which it does seem like it is. So that's perfect. Let's just add this like that. Then next to this one, what we'll want to do is actually use the blueprint that is two times array, the same one. But we'll, we'll make an adjustment. So if we hold... control and we hover over here and we're in blueprint mode building mode then it'll snap properly to it and it'll create a gap there you'll see and this is exactly what we want so we'll place this down however we don't want the bottom assemblers here or splitters to be coming in from the left hand side we'll want these ones to be coming from the right hand side And make sure to add a mark one between the splitters and the assemblers. And then we could just for consistency sake, add a mark three here. We'll then add a mark three between the first splitter and the other ones. We'll remove this splitter because we don't really need it in this case. And we can go straight from this merger that's in front of the first constructor straight into the assembler, just like this. From the screws, we need to go into this top one right here. So what we could do is add a lift with its output to the left here. And then we're going to grab a Mark three. Make sure it's a Mark three lift, by the way. And then we're going to add a Mark three belt. And then we're just going to connect it like this. And it's going to go around neatly and it's going to connect to here. And then the screws are going to go into each one of these guys. Now for the rods, we'll want to add a Mark one belt, but we'll want to stay as close as possible here to the mergers to, to leave room to add other assemblers right here. Okay. The one that has the, cause the plates going in here, this one will be doing some reinforced iron plates. The other two will be doing some rotors. Now we'll have to underclock one of these here to only work at 25%. So only one rotor here. Perfect. So we have a total of five rotors being produced and five reinforced iron plates. The last thing we need now is three assemblers doing the smart planning. So we're going to want both of these to come over and head into. All right. So now we need three assemblers. And we'll need to leave a gap. So they're going to come in from the left hand side. So just a regular one here. But we'll want to leave a gap. So leave a foundation wide gap in between here. And we're just going to place this in the middle of the next foundation. So here's a one foundation gap. And we're placing this in the middle of the other foundation. Or line it up with the other assemblers really. Just like this. Then we'll add a third one here. So we'll take the one time assembler array and we're just going to line it up with the other assemblers like this. We'll add Mark threes in between. We don't need this to be Mark three, by the way, these could be Mark one, but for consistency sake, we're just going to leave it like that. And then we're going to add power and connect it to this power line. All these are then going to produce um, smart plating 
but one of them needs to be underclocked. So we'll just do the very last one here. We're going to underclock this to 50%. And so we're going to produce five smart plating tools. And all we need to do here is add a belt between all the mergers. And then we'll add a storage container somewhere around here. We might as well turn this merger around while we're at it. Have the output head towards this storage container. And there you go. Okay, so the outputs are connected. We have the power connected. We'll want to connect this pole to the pole that's over here. Now those two are connected. And same, we're gonna have to connect this guy. So let's just bring a pole on this side. Connect this guy. So that's all done. And now we're gonna connect the power to the rest here. Like that. We're just making sure that everything is connected to power. This is all connected to power. Now let's bring this back. Connect this to here. Into the smelters. We're gonna remove this output here. This merger. We're just we only we don't really need a merger for this one. We're just gonna send a mark one belt around. We're gonna go like this. And head straight in there. And then for these guys, they are heading this way. Um, we could turn them around, but since I am, and most likely you will be lazy, we'll have to just add this. And then since we need to go up, we just leave it in the air here. We're just going to rotate this like that. Go up two notches. And then head straight into there. Perfect. Everything's pe easy peasy and everything's done now. All right, so this is what our setup looks like. We've got the four smelters doing the iron ingots out here at the bottom. And then we are moving all those ingots into eight different constructors. We've got two doing plates, four doing screws, and then two doing rods. The plates and some of these screws are heading into the first assembler here doing reinforced iron plates. And then we have the rods and the rest of the screws heading into the other two assemblers doing some rotors. And then we're sending both the outputs of these into three assemblers doing smart plating. And everything gets sent into storage here. So five smart plating per minute. This is your layout. All right, next we have to tackle the versatile frameworks. And for the first atal framework, we're just going to go up. We're going to go up four. And then at the end here, we're just going to do one. And then we could just zoop that up and do a platform. All right, so we covered the second floor up. And now we're ready to build the versatile frameworks. But for this one, we're going to need five smelters. We are going to grab our smelter array here. And we're just going to have it like the other one. We're just going to have it come and set it in the middle of this foundation, just like this. Now we'll need a fifth smelter. So we'll just do that one manually here, line it up with the others and we'll add a, um, another splitter here and we'll extend the belt and we'll add a merger to this too. Oops, that's the wrong way. We'll add a merger here. Mark one belts and then mark two belts over here. All right, all these are going to be doing some iron ingots. So we might as well set the recipe up. And this last one will be underclocked. So let's do it right now. This will be underclocked to 66.667 um, or 20 per minute. I would just probably put 20. So it's easier. And then we'll add a power to this too. Again, control C, control V to paste our recipe. Next to the smelters, we're going to add three foundries. Now we're not gonna use all of these, all the foundry outputs in this layout, but we'll send some to the next layout. So for this, we'll want to line up the, the splitter with the other one here, because it's gonna go straight in it. And we'll just, do three of these just like that 
Now we'll connect this, all these splitters down here with Mark II belts. And for the top, we'll want Mark II belts also. Or Mark III, whatever you want. But either way, it needs to be at least Mark II belts. If you haven't set these in the blueprint, you'll want to make sure these are all set to solid steel ingots. We'll want to also connect all the outputs together here with Mark II belts. And the last one needs to be underclocked. We'll need it for the automated wiring. And this one only needs to be at 37.5% to do 22.5 per minute. So that's it for those guys. Uh, except for the power. Let's make sure we give these guys power. Then we connect this guy. And we originally connected that to the pole here. We're just going to connect it to this one and connect the pole to that pole. There you go. So our smelters and foundries are done. When you have blueprints, things go quick. So that's the importance of making blueprints and get them done early. So for this one, we'll need four constructors, which is perfect because we have a constructor array here. Now it doesn't include, um, it doesn't include the outputs, but that's okay because we're going to do three different products again in this. So again, we're going to line everything up. Ideally, this would be in the middle of that foundation, just like that. Okay, now we're good. We're going to send all the ingots into here. So from this merger, we'll add a Mark II belt heading into here. Uh, by the way, this needs to be Mark III's. We'll add Mark III and we'll make sure that this array between the smelters is a Mark III array, okay? A Mark III belts here between all the smelters. We are going to need 140 ore, which is a, you need a Mark III for that. All right, what we could do here is add uh, catwalks to go up. So let's do that. In case you fall off like I did. All right, so the first one here, we're going to be doing some cast screws and it needs to be underclocked to 90% to do 45 per minute, okay? The next two, we'll be doing some iron plates and we'll make sure to underclock one of them. It doesn't really matter which one, but to only do 12.5%. So we need a total of 22.5 iron plates per minute. And for these, we'll want to add a merger and we'll have it go this way with some Mark 1s in between. Perfect. And now this guy will be doing some iron rods and it'll be doing it at 100% efficiency here. So that's good. Now we need some assemblers. We need about three assemblers for now. So let's set that up. One of them is going to be a single. And it's going to be coming in from the left hand side here. Let's have it lined up like this with this uh, merger. And then we're going to actually go back here and delete this splitter and just have this merger go straight into the assembler. And then from here, we're going to want to add a lift. A Mark 1 lift will do. The Mark 1 belt that goes straight into here. And then we need this one to be reinforced iron plates, but we are going to underclock it to 75% just to do 3.75 per minute here. All right, next to that, we are going to add two assemblers. We'll line it up with this one, but we want to give a bit of space. We'll add a, um, again, just enough space here to send the output from this one into here so you don't need a ton of space you could do about a belt worth if you want here something like this then what we're going to do is remove this merger because we only have the one and then we're gonna send a mark one belt around down here into this splitter right here okay just like this these assemblers are going to be doing some um modular frames 
but the second one needs to be underclocked here to 25%. We only need 0.5 modular frames on this one. All right, the last thing we need to do for that assembler is grab the iron rods here. We'll just lift them up and then send a Mark one belt into the top splitters like this. Both of these don't really need to be Mark threes. You can under, you can move them down to Mark one if you want. Perfect. So now we just need to connect the power to these guys. We are going to send a pole over here, connect this, and then same thing over here. We're going to send it and connect it into this one. And then we'll have this one connect. We'll have this one just keep going all the way to the end over here. Uh, to go back and connect to the very last pole that we have. Just like that. So everything is connected to power. And the very last thing we need here is two constructors to grab for these um, steel ingots. They're going to be creating some steel beams. Just going to make sure that it's lined up properly here. Just going to have a splitter coming in from this side. And then going like this. Let's add Mark 1 belts here between everything. And then a Mark... Um, uh, this, this will be a Mark 2 belt between here and there. For the foundry mergers, we'll just remove the, the last merger in front of the last smell, um, foundry. The one that's under clock. Because this one will head upstairs. And these two head over here with a Mark II belt. So now these are going to be doing some steel beams. And we'll want to merge these steel beams heading that way. So let's just add a merger like this. Along with some Mark I belts. Now we'll add power to these ones. So what we can do is just inject a power pole on this line and then add the two to the power finally the last thing we need here is just one assembler so we'll add a assembler the array we're going to need the output of the modular frames here we'll make sure to leave a foundation in between here what we could do here is just remove this top splitter because we can head straight into the input here from the steel beams and we could also technically remove this splitter and what we'll do here too is remove the mergers for this because we actually kind of need it to go this way so we'll add a merger like this with mark one in between and then we're just gonna send it over this into the assembler okay and we just got to give this power to the assembler we'll send it over into there and then we are going to tell it to do versatile frameworks for the output of that one we just need to go straight into storage there you go that's it for the versatile frameworks and for the versatile framework this is our layout we've got the five smelters on the bottom here for the ingots, the iron ingots, and then we have the three, we have three foundries. Now there is an issue here and I am fixing it later in the video, but pretty much you don't want to send the belt after the smelter uh, input into the foundry. The foundry requires ingots, not ore, so we are going to be fixing that later where we are bringing in the ingots from the smelters into the foundry instead. Only two is being used in this layout. The third one is underclocked and it's going up to the next layout. Then we have six total constructors. The first one's doing cast screws underclocked to only do 45 of them. And then the next two are doing iron plates. Both the screws and the iron plates are heading into an assembler here doing reinforced iron plates. The reinforced iron plates are heading into the other two assemblers along with some rods in order to do some modular frames. And those modular frames are being sent into the very last assembler here along with these steel beams which are done in the last two constructors here in order to do some versatile frameworks five per minute heading into storage next it's time to tackle the last layout which is the automated wiring 
Again here, we're just going to go up and then at the very top part of it, we're going to add a one meter to do the next. All right. So here we have the floor done and it's time to set up our automated wiring for the automated wiring is not too overly complicated. We do need a smelter array for copper. So let's start with that. We'll add a smelter array like we've been doing on all the other floors. You're going to want to line this up like this and place this down. Now this will be doing copper. So let's change the recipe to do copper. We're bringing in the um, solid steel ingots from the bottom here too. So we'll add a conveyor lift here. We can just go down and add a mark one lift. We'll make sure that the input's coming this way and we can just add a mark one belt in the middle or you could make this closer so that this goes straight up. Whichever one works, doesn't really matter. We are going to add some catwalks to go back up now. So now we have our copper that's gonna come here and then we have our steel ingots coming up here just like this. Perfect. We need eight constructors for the wires that are going to be produced from here. So we're gonna add our constructor array. It's gonna be roughly here, I believe. Let's just have a look. Yep. That's right in the middle. We'll just place that down and we're going to do another one here right next to it. Like so. We're actually going to turn this one around because next we're going to add one constructor and this is going to go straight into that one constructor using a Mark one belt. And this one constructor will be doing some steel pipes and we needed to underclock it to 75% just to do 15 per minute here. Next, we want to make sure that all the lines between the other eight constructors are marked to between the splitters. They should be already, but we want to make sure we connect the two blueprints together here. Um, for the power, we'll make sure to connect this pole to that pole. And then finally, this one um, can connect the last constructor. Now we need to connect the smelters to the constructor. So what we can do here is just add another pole and send this pole back and then connect it to this one. Now for the outputs, we're, these ones are all creating wires. So we're creating quite a bit of wires, 240 to be precise. And so we're going to need to merge these all into a um, Mark III belt. So we're going to merge them all towards the right here. And the one that's in front of the, this one, which is technically the first one, if you will, will go straight. Okay. So mark one between all the constructors and the splitter uh, mergers should be fine. And then mark three between all of the mergers themselves. So now in front of these guys towards the left side here, let's add uh, four constructors again. This time it will be for wires. So we'll make sure that this splitter is in the middle of the foundation, which it appears to be, and we'll add it like that. Then we'll add a Mark three here between this merger and this splitter. And we'll probably want to upgrade these to Mark threes. Also, these guys will all be doing cables, but this last one will be under clock to um, only produce a 10 per minute. We'll have to connect the power. So let's bring another pole here and connect it to this one. Okay, so these are done. We'll want to merge all of these together and we'll head that way. So we'll need a Mark II in between all these to the very minimum. And then Mark I between the constructors and the mergers themselves. So that's it for the cables. Now the cables are going into some assemblers, two of them. But before we do that, we will need a total of three assemblers, pretty much two of them that will need cables and the output of the other assembler. So uh, what we'll probably want to do here is just add a double array like this of the assembler. What we'll do here is just undo the bottom smelt uh, splitters and we're going to actually rotate them from the other side. 
and we'll just add mark one between everything here now for the top part though we are going to bring in a mark two line coming in from this side from the output of the cables and we're just going to add a lift, a Mark II lift that will head into the top splitters. Like that. Okay. We'll connect these assemblers power from the pole here to the constructor one over here. Both of these are going to be creating our automated wiring. And then they're outputted together here, which is, which is good. And we could just have it go into storage. Over here and then belt into the storage so the automated wiring is done except we just need one more assembler for the last assembler we need to add a um, one-time assembler array here we want to leave a little bit of room so what we could do is just have the one output line it up with this constructor here we'll delete that bottom uh, splitter and then we'll add a mark one line from that constructor into here and then we just need to add a all right another issue here uh we don't move the cables to the other assembler we'll be moving the wires there i do fix it uh, pretty much near the end of the video so you feel free to not attach this assembler the third assembler just yet if you want uh we'll be fixing this later or just do it and follow through it doesn't really matter mark three line from that top array from the other two into this one okay then here we can get rid of the merger and we'll just run a mark one line in between that goes into the bottom smelters of the other assemblers and the last thing is just to give this guy power and set it to produce some stators all right i forgot to mention that for the smelter array, you need to add a Mark II belt here that goes into the constructor array, okay? So, little recap here. We've got four smelters doing the copper ingots. We'll, we'll be bringing those in in a little bit. And then those are going into eight constructors doing wires. And then those eight constructors doing wires are going into four constructors doing cables. Now, one of those cables is under clock to only 33.3%. Three three percent. All those cables are then being sent into the two automated wiring assemblers. We're grabbing some steel ingots from the bottom, and we're bringing it here into a steel pipe constructor that is actually underclocked to seventy five percent, and it's going into the assembler with the leftover of the cables in order to create some stators, and then the stators are heading into the two assemblers for the automated wiring. And all that is going into another storage. For the inputs, we are going to need about 272 iron ore. And in order to do that, we have two iron nodes right next to our factory here. I put a Mark II miner on the pure node here to get 240. And then a Mark I node just next to it. A Mark I miner. So we'll start by bringing in the ore to the back of our factory. Like that. And we could take these down. Like this. Alright, so we got power to both of these now. And they're full with items. This one needs a Mark III belt. And we're going to bring it right over here. This one can stay a Mark II. And we're going to bring these both all the way to those lifts. Go into here. Now we'll make sure to upgrade this lift to a Mark III lift. And now we'll do the Mark II belt. Into here. And that's already a Mark II. Alright, so we got our two iron ore nodes going up. A copper is right there in the corner. We should turn this guy around. And we'll just continue this this way. For this, we just really need a Mark 1 miner since it's a pure node. So it's going to give us our 120 that we need. And we just need to give it some power. And because we want this to be obviously the most realistic thing ever, 
We're just gonna bypass the rock. Oh. And then we're going straight into this guy. All right. So that handles our iron and our copper. The last thing we need to bring is coal. And for that, we're gonna have to go all the way up there to go get our coal. And while you're on the way there, make sure you bring some power. We're going to need it. All right, when you get up here, we're gonna wanna cross the water to the other side. And there's also something else we'll wanna do up here. Now, when you get up here, there'll be some water with a rock inside. If you go to the right of that, You'll see another body of water and right there, there is Sam ore. You want to start at least gathering Sam ore right away. We'll set that up right now before we do anything else, because we are going to need that to unlock the best feature in Satisfactory 1.0, which is the dimensional depots. Now it is an impure node, but an impure is better than nothing. Ideally, you would use a miner mark two if you have the materials. And then we'll bring that that line and connect it here. Now, 60 per minute is good to start. We could overclock this to get even more. And we probably will do that later on. But what's important is starting this process. So what we'll do is we're going to add a storage bin here and then just start taking the Sam ore out. You're going to need, I believe it's 50. Let's just double check here. No, it's 10. That's even better. Grab your first 10 and let's just start unlocking here. And right, next, once you have 20 more, you can unlock the second unlock, which is the, the recipe to allow you to create reanimated Sam. So we're going to take that. The next step is we're going to need 10 of the reanimated Sam in order to unlock the Sam fluctuator. So we're going to start by adding a constructor here, and this will be doing our reanimated Sam. We need 120 per minute here, and we're only taking 60. So what we could do here is underclock this to 50% and we'll give it some power. And then we'll output into another storage. There you go. We're just going to let this be for now. And we are going to go and set up our coal and we'll come back to this later. All right, grab your, your uh, power line and let's head on over to the other side here. Now, how you bring that down depends entirely on your preference. Now, for now, we don't have to overthink it. We need a total of 95 ore, so just a Mark 1 miner on one of these pure nodes, you'll be fine. The way I just typically do this is I just head on to the left here into the void and then bring it down with a lift. So that's what we are going to do. We're just going to add a floor lift hole and a Mark 2 lift here. Connect that. We just want to make sure that everything is going good here. All right, so we got 85 of this, which is good. So what we'll want to do here is drop a MAM and then we'll go and unlock our SAM fluctuators. Now you should have also found by now a Mercer Sphere. So we're going to go and research that. And now you just need 10 SAM fluctuators and one Mercer Sphere in order to uh, unlock the Dimensional Depot. We, we could bring it down with our coal. So that's what exactly what we're going to do. And then we'll place here another hole. And a lift and then put that in the lift. So that's good. So now we're sending both coal and reanimated Sam down to the bottom there. And we'll bring both to our factory over there. All right. So back here, what we can do is try to line this up to the grid here. Now this might be okay or it might be this one i'm not entirely sure yet so what we can do is just grab some stackable conveyor poles and zoom that up 
Nice and slow. Okay, perfect. What I like to do is just bring down a, uh, a vertical aspect here all the way down. Okay, so it's actually this one. All right, so now that we know that it's this one, we can just add a lift and snap it right there to this one. And we're going to do the same thing. There you go. We snap that one. And we got our two lifts going down. So now we should have our two lines just like this. And we could head straight right here. That'd be good. We could either go straight there or we could go down and around. I think though that to preserve this arch, I'm probably gonna decide to go down. So we're probably just gonna put some conveyor lift holes here. We'll do it here and here. At a Mark II lift. And then send these guys down into there. And we'll go down here. Just do the four meter here. We'll have this go all the way around. Hey, right. then we can just add new lifts over here. And we'll bring back the lines. Okay, perfect. Now we've got our lines heading into the factory. Now we just need to go and bring them up to where they need to go. And these things will also need to send power here. It's connected to the grid. Like that. Both of these are going to go up higher. We'll uh, change this splitter to be coming in from this side. And we got to make sure to add a Mark II belt here. And we're going to take one of the belts here. Um, we got to make sure we take the one that's a Mark II. So the one in the middle. So let's grab the one that's in the middle. And then head like this so now this one will start working these ones will have to go back up that this one needs to be a mark three but the other one can be a mark two so on this floor we need the power which we'll grab from here and we'll send that there and again we'll send it back up and we'll do the same thing here. We'll rotate this smelter, uh, this splitter. Actually, here it needs to be all Mark 3s. So let's make sure these are all Mark 3s. And then we'll grab the Mark 3 here. And then we'll have it in a Mark 3 belt head into that splitter. Now we need to grab the coal, which is this guy right here. In a Mark II, we'll lift it up to match the, the uh, splitter up here. So that's going to go in and uh, start doing our, our solid steel ingots. Okay, then we need to bring the other two up. And we'll send this one up too. Alright, so now we've got this power. Let's bring this up. Into here. And all we have to do again here is flip this splitter around. And then we'll send this Mark II copper line into the splitter. And that's pretty much it. This, we'll use it in the next episode. We'll be setting this up. So there's a couple issues here that we forgot to do. We have to bring our iron ingots back here into the foundries. So after the last uh iron rod constructor here we're gonna add a mark ii belt and we're just gonna have it come around here and go between the foundries and head straight into the first m splitter of the foundries now we just gotta fix this power we'll add a 
ceiling line here. We'll connect the smelter. And then we have to connect the this to the power line all the way over here. And we have to connect the last, this first foundry to that line too. So pretty much we got rid of the power line down here and we just put it here at the top so that we could put the line here, okay? So when you do that, make sure that this smelter and this foundry is connected and that we're connecting to the pole that's over here, okay? And now we'll be doing steel. The last thing we need to do is just to make sure that the steel is going up and it sure looks like it. The extra steel is going up here. Let's just make sure that the upstairs is running smooth and we'll be done. Copper is doing good. It will take some time to saturate the lines though, so that's okay. Give it a bit of time. It will eventually make all its way all the way to the end here. So steel is coming here. We're doing the pipes. The pipes are being sent over. All right, so there was a mistake. We originally put the cables going into here, but this needs to be wires. So to do that, we're just going to continue the wires over here and we're just going to head on over here. And we'll add a lift. Just making sure that it's lined up. This seems to be good. Like that. And there you go. Now we've got our wires going in here. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like from a top-down view. All right, so some small adjustments, like I said. Um, the wires are the ones that need to continue to the stators here on the right. So we removed the line that was here that went into that splitter. And we just continued the wire line around and up into this stator. Now it's just a matter of letting everything work. While we're gathering the items to complete phase two, you'll just want to go and get some hard drives, some Mercer Sphere, some power slugs. You're going to need all of these things going forward. So make sure you go and get a whole bunch of those things, okay? I will be adding those blueprints onto my Patreon for those who want them. I have been streaming on Twitch a lot lately, so come and say hi and I'll put the link down below. Just give it a follow. You'll get notified when I go live. And as usual, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't so far. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.